Hello and welcome to Repton International School Malaysia. My name is Mrs. Kate Doyle. I am the Deputy Principal and the Head of Early Years and Junior School. Here's just a quick overview of our curriculum, which is a 3 to 18 through school, where we start with the English National Curriculum throughout Early Years and Junior School. And then as you move up into Senior School, you have other options of IGCSE, IBDP, and A-levels. So we are very proud to offer the English National Curriculum here at Repton International. It's a broad and balanced curriculum which is really designed to challenge and stimulate children in ensuring that we get the very best outcomes for all of our children as they move through the school and up into our senior school. We really try to develop those broader skills such as leadership, social confidence, competence, and we have a really strong curriculum which offers cross-curricular links to encourage children to develop these skills alongside applying skills, knowledge and understanding between areas of learning, which means they really do get a secure understanding of what they're learning and are able to apply it in different situations. Our curriculum is incredibly carefully planned and we always make sure that we are looking for the progression through the schools so that we are building upon topics which children have already got a knowledge of so that they are really developing themselves as they move through the school. Here's just a quick overview of the difference between the Malaysian grade system and the English year system. So it shows you how old the children are, which grade they would be in, and then the British year group and the British key stage. So in the UK, we have two different key stages, which is key stage one and key stage two. Our EYFS, which are our children aged three to five, are in a separate key stage. Here is what our curriculum looks like throughout nursery all the way to year six. And as you can see, as children move through the school, they become, to become they tend to have much more in-depth knowledge of the different areas because of the fact that we spend longer on them to ensure that they really are able to master the skills that they need to and that they get that depth of learning throughout the school. We try to ensure that our curriculum is exciting and engaging and that the children really want to learn. And for all of our topics, we ensure that we have a theme day or something to really hook the children in and inspire them. Here is our timetable to show you what a normal school day runs like. And we finish at 3.30, but at the moment, due to SOPs, we do have different timings at the end of the day for our different year groups. In our early years, we have a safe and nurturing environment. We have a well-maintained building, outdoor play spaces, and healthy and freshly prepared food, which is served to the children twice a day. We have seven areas of learning, communication and language, phys physical development, personal, social and emotional development, literacy, mathematics, understanding the world, expressive arts and design. And the children learn all about these through play, as well as teacher input and being modeled how to achieve certain tasks and the opportunity to try them themselves and develop further. As the children move into reception, we offer um, additional languages, as well as um, ensuring that they have support for English as a foreign language when needed. Safeguarding is obviously a priority across our early years. We have a pastoral care and health system, and they are also able to access the extracurricular activities. In our junior school, that's years one to six, we ensure continuity and progression in all subjects but we really do focus on the English reading, writing, and also mathematics to ensure that children really do have that basis to go on and achieve. We value the opportunities for talk in all areas of the curriculum, and the children are really encouraged to develop their higher thinking skills and to question and answer those questions themselves with support to ensure that we're really encouraging children in their independence both in and outside of the classroom. We try to learn outside of the classroom where possible and we do have lots of different things going on such as gardening areas where the children are able to become involved and through our ECAs we have a wide range of things that the children become involved in. The subjects that we offer across junior school other than those main English and maths and science 
is the art and design, computing. We have languages. We have Bahasa for our Malay peoples, and then a choice of either French or Mandarin for our other students. We have geography, history, music, physical education, and swimming, and we have personal social health education as well. So during the school day, we do have some children who do need additional support with their um, English development, which is why we have a dedicated EAL department, which is there to support children in acquiring um, a high level of English speaking. So all of our lessons are delivered in English. However, our specialist EAL department is staffed by specially trained teachers to really help your child develop their English language skills as they move throughout the school. We have a range of ECAs and these run throughout the week. At the moment, unfortunately, we don't have as many available because of the SOPs, but we do have all of these ready to start running as soon as we are able to do so again. So we have teacher-led ECAs, which are where the teachers can follow their own passions and support children learning further um, skills in them. And we also have the externally-led ECAs where we have sports coaches and music lessons, etc. So we also have the house system and a range of competitions and activities which the children are able to take part in throughout the year. Thank you so much for listening to all that I've had to say about our EY and junior school. If you require any further information, please do email the address info at repton.edu.my. The next steps are if you would like to come and visit the school, we would love to see you register assessment and then joining our Repton family. We really do look forward to welcoming you soon. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mr. Midgley. I'm the Deputy Principal and Head of School of Repton International School, Malaysia. In this section, I will be talking to you about the Senior School, uh, which includes Key Stage 3 for Year 11 to 14 year olds, IGCC, which is 14 to 16 year olds and A-level and IB, which are our parallel sixth form curriculum for 17 and 18 year olds. Now, just so you're familiar with the, the grading system and the people age or the average age for these systems within the British system, we have uh, pupils at 11 to 14 year old, as you can see on the left hand side, and they fit within our key stage three, which you can see in the column on the far right hand side. That is our US seven, eight and nine. Those at 14, 16 year old are year 11 and are year 10 pupils, which is key stage four. And those pupils are the ones who are doing IGCSEs. Those in our sixth form here, as it shows in the left hand side, 16 to 18 year olds, that's year 12 and year 13, which is key stage five. So that's A levels and the IBDP, which is the International Baccalaureate Diploma Programme. So splitting up the three key stages, on the left hand side is key stage three, and then funneling into key stage four, and then funneling even further into key stage five. What you see from key stage three curriculum is, is, is the English national curriculum, uh, which is trying to offer a broad and balanced sort of view to, to all subjects underpinned by English maths and science. Uh, we have a strong core with regards to humanities also, and we try and embrace our, our languages side and our arts side of things also. Um, just so you are aware, you can see that Bahasa Malay is studied by Malay students and there is the opportunity where some students who are, are not Malaysian who also get to, to get engaged with that also. Key stage four at uh, the end of year nine, beginning of year ten, is where students start to, to make their choices. They choose what they would like to do in the sense of the, their options. So because we want to keep the curriculum nice and broad, we want to make sure our students are um, having experience of the full breadth. English is mandatory, maths is mandatory, it's a science of some description, so a biology, a chemistry or physics is mandatory. One of the humanities subjects is mandatory as well, so a history, a geography, a business or economics. And then one of the languages is also mandatory as well. At the moment we offer Bahasa Malay, French as a foreign language, we and we offer the different levels of Mandarin, starting from uh, those who are beginners right the way through those who are native speakers. 
just help enrich the curriculum further, we, we offer then a, a wide berth of subjects that uh, people can choose from once they've gone through the mandatory fields, and that could be anything from, again, humanities or extra sciences to arts, designs, technologies, and, and music, and the IGCC physical education also. As part of the curriculum, just to ensure that our well-being, the safety of our students is paramount and their emotional well-being also, we have personal, social, health and emotional education that it's uh, that every single Friday morning also. Um, further to that, at Key Stage 5, it continues. So we, we continue with the, uh, the personal, social health and, and emotional education uh, throughout, uh, just to carry on ensuring the students are well aware and are able to be engaged and informed young citizens for the future. But uh, we then allow more breadth of uh, subject choice, well, I suppose more focused subject choice. So they, if they choose to go down an A-level program, they would choose between three and four subjects with an EPQ or an IPQ, which stands for International Project Qualification, which is a uh, very similar to the extended essay in the IBDP. Um, it's effectively a four to 5,000 word essay on a subject area or a area of interest of their own choosing and where they get a coach to work alongside. But getting back to the A-level choices, there are three to four subjects and we have quite uh, the breadth to choose from, ranging from the English and mathematics before, an array of sciences, humanities, and obviously the arts, as we've mentioned also. So that's the A-level. Uh, as far as the IBDP is concerned, the IBDP has major, six major groups to choose from. A uh, majority of our students choose their subjects to group one, two, three to group five. That includes obviously English, which is mandatory in IBDP, mathematics, which is mandatory. Uh, we have our science and we have our humanities subjects, which are public choices and a, uh, and a second language, uh, which we have uh, ab initio for those who are beginning. And uh, we have also uh, foreign language, the other foreign languages, Mandarin, French, students from also. So quite the breadth. So why do we choose IGCC from uh, Cambridge? Well, ultimately, uh, Cambridge has been offering international qualifications for some number of years, and it's most popular international choice of qualification uh, across the globe. Um, it's standardised in all the different zones for the different regions of the, of the world, and um, it's uh, because of its accreditation, our students go on and to, to the destinations of their choice. So we, we, we've chosen to stick with Cambridge IGCC. A-levels are in a similar thread, so that's also offered from Cambridge um, for subjects which are most closely linked for the UK. Uh, we have quite a few students who do choose to go to UK schools and A-levels is most prominent to that. Many students choose to choose A-levels based on the fact that they can focus in on what their selected field is or what their destination is likely to be. So they've already had some firm thoughts as to what direction they want to go. And because of that, they, they can then focus on that. What is quite different to that is the IBDP programme, um, which keeps the curriculum very broad, as I've said already, having to do English, maths, continuing, uh, some sort of uh, science, humanities and foreign language. Um, and people keep the curriculum very broad in the IDP. It's much more recognised uh, globally if you're not looking to go to the UK as such and there are different areas that you would, uh, you would like to be and remain competitive for. So just as an update more recently, our examination results for 2020 as students left, as you can see, um, are very impressive. 100% of our students achieved five, eight star to C grades in, in more than five subjects or more. And our students for the IDP uh, also achieved 100% of the um, pass rate. Um, the reason I'm highlighting this to, to you is obviously so you can see that our students do achieve and they do get to go to the destinations of their choice here. What you won't see on this page is an A-level outcome because we've started that as a new curriculum, and so far it has uh, it really has has quite a high uptake, very similar uptake to the IBDB program here. We do have a number of students who have English as a as a foreign language, which is your, you'd expect in an international setting, um, and because of that, we have a separate department who support English as an additional language, uh, one for immersion to be able to support them getting into classes and be competent with English language because that is our, our language of instruction for all subjects. Um, and then also we try to be as inclusive as possible uh, by supporting our students in class as well. In addition to our, our main core curriculum that we talked about, the academic side is an extracurricular program as well. So the extracurricular activities is what ECA stands for. 
uh, lots of different variety and variety of, of uh, activities to get involved in. Uh, these take place after school on Monday, right the way through to Friday from 3.30 till 4.30. Obviously, it's been in time, it's been more difficult with regards to SOPs being in place, but, it, uh, but students have been, been involved in an array of activities, including um, chess clubs and football clubs and science clubs. Uh, one of the more, more interesting ones, which has been able to carry through during the project and curriculum time is the Eco Warriors, where they're trying to make a geodesic dome right now for an outdoor classroom and a sort of uh, a, a living, growing garden wall. So the school day runs from 8.10 right the way through till 3.30. There are seven periods or lessons during our school day, uh, which are 50 minutes each, uh, with two breaks in the school day, one of those being a lunch break, which is also 50 minutes long. A pickup happens quite quickly after the uh, after 3.30. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to, to watch this clip. And if uh, you'd like further information, please email the e information, oh, sorry, info at repton.edu.my email address, where our admission team will be happy to help. So from this stage of having the virtual welcome from myself, you get the opportunity when you email them to visit the school, hopefully register, have some sort of assessments and join the Repton family. So look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much.